You're a falling star. You're the getaway car. You're the light in the sand. Where... Oh, I recognize this handwriting. <laughs> the attitudes for the home. It was all Clark's idea. So, so sweet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> sweet Nancy Grace, this is the last time I think I can call you that name officially. Whoa. This has gotten very real in a hurry. This letter is so long overdue as it's been a while since I've written to you. I hope you're reading this on the best day of your entire life. Every time you read this, I hope it, it helps make that day the best day of your life. Well, it's wedding time and time to tell you, or er, and, and to tell you I've been really looking forward to today would be a major understatement. I've been challenged all week with every possible distraction Satan could put in the way, but what a great blessing it is to know that he's waging war with the wrong God and the wrong bride and groom. I've never imagined that I could get to marry someone of such confidence, love, and depth. You are more than, than my wife-to-be. You are a support system, a loving companion, and a closet, <laughs> a closet freak. <laughs> I love everything about you, from your faithful sport, to your cute confidence, to your frantic energy. Oh wait, I almost forgot. You are also beautiful. I know you're about to define, define beauty in a whole new way in that dress, but beyond that, you have a classic and simply elegant style about you that is so attractive. I love how you love your family. I love how you love my family. I knew you, know you laugh about my comments on how many kids I'd like, but know that I will never doubt your ability to love our family. I tend to get long-winded, so I'll wind this down. Nancy, I'm going to melt when I see you tonight, and I can't wait to make the biggest promise of my life to you and with you. There isn't another person on this earth <laughs> that I'd want to pledge allegiance to. <laughs> I, I think back on the last two years, and it's crazy to think about all the memories we have already shared. I seriously feel bad for other people who don't have all the fun memories that we have, and I can't, ima can't imagine how we will remember all the ones we are about to create when we try to reminisce from the porch of our nursing home in 70 years. Here's to making love and memories for all the years to come. Here's also to my unconditional love and pursuit of you for as long as I live. Laugh and love. William Clark O'Kelly III. So I have been incredibly blessed to just be around so many great people in my life and um, had the chance to date some pretty amazing people, but I think Clark really stood out in particular um, after many years of prayer, just praying very intentionally and specifically for a man that, um, that makes me laugh no matter what and often and someone also that puts God before me or before anyone else and throughout the span of our relationship there have been times when we have had to make that decision of is it God or is it each other and in those moments it's obviously been so challenging but chosen God over each other and God has a funny way of then bringing you closer together, and so ultimately you're choosing God, but in a weird, twisted way, you're also choosing each other first. Um, but I was reminiscing on some old journal entries. I used to be a big journaler, and um, the time right before Clark and I first started dating, um, it was very consistent that I was praying for those two things. and people from all walks of life, whether it's family friends of his or college friends or high school friends, without even knowing that that was a specific prayer intention of mine, have mentioned how incredibly godly and funny he is. And that really rang true during the rehearsal dinner last night, hearing everyone's toast and um, how much people love being around him and how they lead or how he's led them to Christ and also how he's been such a light in um, the craziness of this world and brought so much laughter to them and their friendship. I love how much we can play together, whether it's making a grocery run and somehow we end up making memories at Publix, um, or whether it's a Sunday afternoon walk around Bobby Jones Golf Course, 
Um, there is absolutely nothing more that I love than just spending time with him and being in his presence. And um, truly, he, he has an incredible ability to make people laugh um, in any circumstance. And this has been a really challenging week um, for the two of us and amazing just to see how he has continued to remain joyful and um, funny and laugh through the challenging circumstances. And I know there's going to be challenges that head our way and I have full confidence that he will never stop laughing and never stop making me laugh. Today, specifically, I am very much looking forward to walking down the aisle and seeing him for the first time. And even yesterday during the rehearsal, the nerves were starting to get to me, just being in a white dress and in heels and people watching us. And the second I took his hand, it was like everything just kind of calmed down. And I can very much imagine that's going to happen today where the nerves hit, but the second we hold hands, hopefully the, the craziness will all calm, calm down again. I'm looking forward to the little things like the, the grocery runs or brushing our teeth together or um, just sitting on the couch and reminiscing on our day. And we were talking the other day about how we love to have couch time every day and just take a few minutes and talk about how's your day? What, what were the good things that happened? What were the bad things that happened? And just be real with each other. And um, reaching a, a even greater level of depth, which I feel like we already have such an amazing relationship, but I know it's only gonna continue to go deeper and I can't wait to see what that looks like for us. So Nancy was the, like the first really long um, relationship that I got into and we started dating right after college, I guess no, it was about a year and a half after college in May of 2018 and I had a lot of pressure from some of my closest friends um, at the time who were, as we've now found out uh, at last night and today, there was a lot of, a lot of integral pieces of, of people trying to um, convince me to ask her out and um, in some ways making up some pretty funny stories to convince me of stuff that uh, actually was true and that was that she really wanted wanted me to ask her out and I was shy so I needed a little bit of a push um, so a lot of credit owed to friends on both sides of ours but um, I think when you don't date a lot it takes a little bit to kind of get over that first hump and um, but then on the flip side like I think for for me, I went into it with a very like intentional focus of like, I want to make sure that one, like I'm taking care of her, but two, that I go about this maturely and, um, you know, do my best to, um, I don't know, not, not mess it up, not really knowing what, what I was doing. Um, so I was kind of learning and still learning, uh, even today, still learning as we go. And I, th I think that's kind of I guess that's that's part of what it's all about. So it's kind of fun that it was one of the like, I guess not 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 the first, but definitely it, it was certainly. I, I had not dated a lot of people prior, which which made it kind of fun to learn as you go and um, learn about someone in that way. I, I would say that's been, um, I mean, without a doubt, the biggest um, central piece for both of us. Um, everyone knows. Everyone who knows us knows that we hold our faith. Um, as a really important thing and, and our number one priority and um, Nancy always told me that I made it really apparent that God was going to be first uh, in my relationship with her and um, I I never was overtly trying to do that and I think that's like a cool thing that that God does in your life of like naturally aligning your heart with him um, if you're if you're following him like he just kind of naturally helps you prioritize and I think that's something that he was doing for Nancy and I the whole time kind of allowing us to build this central focus of like we're going to focus on our faith and that in turn is going to bring us closer together and we definitely you know we, we didn't have I wouldn't say we've had just tons and tons of trials but we definitely have had so many like really in-depth discussions about our faith and we have differences in our churches and that's been a piece that at the end of the day like 
has brought us so much closer together and I know for me has has enhanced my relationship with the Lord, which I, I would have said prior to dating Nancy that I, I already was a man of of strong faith. Um, and, and since dating Nancy and seeing the depth in which she digs into things that's like so different than how I dig into things, it's been this really cool contrast um, that I, I think is really, excuse me, I know has, has helped both of us. What does Nancy mean to me? Um, well, she is, um, she she means more than more than she even knows to me. Uh, we wouldn't be sitting here today if she didn't mean more than than anything in the world to me. Um, I think she means um, comfort and and um, and love in a lot of ways. There, like I, I don't know. She just she brings out um, sides of me that I have not seen in myself before, and that in turn I I need her to. To point out to me of like, I love when you do that. I'm like, do I do that? I, yes, I do. Oh, cool. Well, thanks. I'm glad it makes you, makes you happy. Um, I, she means a lot to me because she shows me sides of myself that I, both good and bad, that I am not, um, not always conscious of and not always aware of. So, um, she keeps me on on the right path and is a great, um, great partner. What do I love most about Nancy? I love her simplicity. Um, Nancy, you have like a, a way of just kind of blocking out the noise in a lot of cases of um, when the world wants you to do something or when, when I want you to do something or others want you to do something or whether it's something you want to, that people want you to wear or say or practice, you, you, you really only focus on the things that matter most to you. Um, I'm certainly fortunate to be one of, one of those things. Um, we talked about faith. That's certainly one of those things. And I think you let you let a very simple mindset govern how you walk um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's something that I know I really appreciate because I try to do it too. And I think um, it's so easy to get clouded with so many distractions. And that's been a huge piece of what's gotten us here is being able to recognize that there's so many distractions to get in the way of of a good thing. And thanks to your simple mindset on things I think we're able to like have a very clear view and and have a, like a peaceful sense of clarity um, with everything that you do and I think that's 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 definitely the thing I love most about Nancy. Today uh, well so far today has been probably the most fun day of my life and I haven't even gotten to see Nancy yet so it is it is only gonna get better I think today um, Today is symbolic of a covenant. It's symbolic of a promise and a commitment. Um, but today is just 24 hours. I think today um, is so representative of a lifelong um, that for me, I look at everything that everybody's put into making today possible and making it such a great celebration. Uh, but I see it as like a springboard into this lifelong of, of all the things I just mentioned of, of commitment and, and love for one another. and, and continue nurturing of each other's faith. Um, and today's just kind of the symbol we'll always get to look back on, um, which will be cool. You're the swimming pool on an August day And you're the perfect thing to say And you play it coy, but it's kind of cute Oh, when you smile at me, you know exactly what you do Baby, don't pretend that you don't know it's true Cause you can see it when I look at you So I have Yeah And I'm actually going to turn this to the other one Yeah Go
every word, your everything. You're a carousel, you're a wishing well, and you light me up when you ring my bell. You're a mystery, you're from outer space, you're every minute of my every day. And I can't believe uh, that I'm your man, and I get to kiss you, baby, just because I can. Whatever comes our way, I will see it through, and you know that's what all love can do. And in this crazy life, and through these crazy times, it's you, it's you, you make me sing your every line. You're every word, you're everything That I see you, and you won't be surprised. It happens every time, it's nothing new. It's always on a night like tonight. I thank God you can read my mind. Cause when you look at me with those eyes, oh, I'm speechless, staring at you, standing there in that dress. What it's doing to me. Cause watching you is all that I can do And I'm speechless You already know that you're my weakness After all this time I'm just as nervous Every time you walk into the room something to me and I've been in a daze ever since the day that we met you took the breath out of my lungs can't even fight it and all of the words out of my mouth without even trying and I together. Thank you for marriage. I just pray that Nancy and Clark um, can remember every single second and just feel your presence in the room. Um, thank you for both of them and everything that mean, they mean to everyone around them. Um, just please just pour your love over them. Let us feel your spirit and let people who don't know you in this cathedral get to know you because of the light that Nancy and Clark are. And just thank you for them, and just let tonight be a night that is so of you. So reflective of your character and Nancy and Clark's character. And you know, I... My most incredible man out there, someone who's constantly leading her closer to Christ, and she's doing the same for him. We just pray that through this, through this evening of celebration, um, she can take a second and he can take a second to just smile and look up at you and be 
reminded of all these people who've flown and driven many, many miles to be here to celebrate this wonderful couple.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your, with your spirit. spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we have come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration. And now we stand with Clark and Nancy on this day that they intend to form a home of their own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance. So let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayer as their brothers and sisters. And let us listen attentively with them to the word that God will speak to us today in his sacred scriptures. And then with Holy Mother Church, let us humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Let us pray. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated for our readings from Scripture. Be to God.
first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God, and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God is revealed to us. God sent his only begotten Son into the world, so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought into perfection in us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You never journeyed alone. 
Because in these many faces, you see stories of blessings, of joys, struggles. Maybe you remember some tears. Maybe some victories. All of these different stories are being woven together by God. And each one of them brought you one step closer and closer to encounter each other. So I welcome you all of the guests here tonight. And Nancy and Clark, I know that you're grateful for all of them here. But in a very special way, I want to thank your parents. Because in a very special way, I know they have laid a good foundation that prepared you for this moment. I have seen that over the past several months of getting to know you during this time of formation. It's evident that you are building on a good foundation. Your parents, they were your first teachers in life. And they taught you by their own goodness and their own sacrifice and their own sincerity what it means to love God and to love one another. And I'm sure they're feeling all kinds of emotions right now. And I hope they feel truly the immense joy that is seeing your children come one step closer to fullness. So I want to thank them for that. You're doing a good job of what God entrusts them. Thank you especially for beginning this journey of faith for them. Because you see, many years ago, when they were little, at their baptism, you made this prayer. You asked God to make them his own. And the reason they now know that they belong to each other is precisely because they understand very well that they first belong to the Lord. Now, I hope they don't mind that I'm sharing this with you, but it's so powerful and it's solid advice for anyone who looks forward to what the Lord has prepared for them. Now, Master Nancy shared with me that before meeting Clark, she had been praying for a spouse that would love Christ above anything else, even herself. And when I met Clark, I quickly knew that he had been making that very same prayer for some time. Now, I don't want to canonize them quite yet. I want them to live a long, happy life. You know, a long way to go, for sure. So many more things in store. But, but I share that with you because that's the way. That's the only way to hold things. So remember your own words. Remember that same prayer. Keep praying that same prayer day by day. Because loving Christ above all else is the key to accomplishing the most important of all your goals, which is to get each other into heaven, to become saints. You see, it seems kind of contradictory and difficult, doesn't it, to ask someone to love another person more than their own spouse. But the truth about this is that loving Christ above all else will not make you neglect your spouses. It will not take away from your love for each other or your love for your family and love for your friends. Quite the opposite. If Christ is in the center of your relationship, you will be better spouses, better parents, and better friends, because his love will elevate everything that you do. Remember that very well, because you know the reality of our times, of our world. You know that sin has come through the concept of love in our world. You see, the most of the world, they see and understand love through a very selfish lens, isn't it? Because from a very young age, we're told that love and happiness are one and the same. And therefore, that we need to do everything to make ourselves happy at all costs, even if it means living selfishly. And that's why so many people, they venture out into the world in pursuit of this type of happiness, this type of love, and they give in to unlimited pleasures and adventures that seem to make them happy. But what happens? They eventually arrive again at that point where there's that emptiness, that deep void that the world simply can never fill. So many young people hold the light and fall into this trap because that's just not how love works. You see, it's not that love can make you happy and will, right? And we want that. But love will make you happy not because your life all of a sudden marriage is going to become pleasant and effortless. Ask any married person. That's not going to be the case. But your love will make you happy if it is centered on Christ on his cross. Because love is a paradox that promises to make your life whole if only you give your life away. The world 
this time on Friday night with love, so it runs away from him. The people continue to be empty inside. But that's exactly why Christ showed us the truth about love. And that's why he gave himself on that cross. Because the cross is the greatest icon of true love. And that's why you are beginning your covenant here in your marriage at the foot of that cross. When Christ said, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend, he wasn't just talking about what he himself would do. He was pointing to married love. He was pointing to marriage. Because in exchanging your vows, you're actually dying to yourself. So to live for something greater. And in this exchange, you accept a great responsibility to God and to each other, but also to the world. You see, marriage is one of God's most masterful constructs. It is the way that He desired to manifest His own love and creation from the beginning. And it is why He calls you to be holy, faithful, and fruitful. Because in this sacred union, God proves that love is powerful enough to unite two souls in such a mystical way that they become one flesh. And He proves that love is so mighty that it can overflow outside of yourself and has the power to become embodied in the signs of love that are our children. And most of all, love has the power to shine in the darkness so as to guide those who seek the Lord back to its very source. Marriage should be one of the most visible signs of God's love in the world. You see, the thing is this, most people expect to see the love of God when they come into the church, and hopefully they do. I want everybody who comes into the walls of the church, within the walls of the church, to experience love. But the reality is that God needs that love to be seen outside his walls. And your marriage is one of the best instruments to proclaim his good news out there, in your homes, in your neighborhoods, in your workplaces. So love boldly. Proclaim your covenant boldly. Be courageous in your marriage. Show people that you are joyful in your marriage. Show people that you are that you are steadfast, that you can persevere the challenges that you will face. Give people a reason to desire what you have found. That's why it gives us such a great blessing, filled with so much grace here at the foot of the altar, at the foot of the cross. Because the truth is, no matter what challenge you encounter going forward, you will now know that God is truly with you. Because the truth is, you will need help. You cannot do it on your own. If you haven't done it on your own to now, God's not asking you to do it on your own going forward. So here's some closing advice for someone who is not married, but who has received a lot of guidance from people who are. Your marriage will be perfect. You will make mistakes. And you have to be okay with it. Because those will define your love. You have to be compassionate with each other. Learn to say, I'm sorry, and I forgive you, and mean it. And sometimes that happens every single day, sometimes many times a day. It's okay, so long as people are being compassionate with each other. Mercy will play a big role in how you persevere. Pray for the strength to be merciful. Pray together every single day, whether you're in the same room or whether you're separated by any distance. Make this a non-negotiable for your prayer. It's simple. If you invite the offer of love into your life every single day, he will teach you how to love every single day. Be kind and generous, yes, to each other, but also to those in need of around you. Very simply put, a marriage is not called to betray God's generosity by caring just for yourselves. Listen to the way God wants you to care for others and truly respond to that in your own heart, having Christ in the end of And finally, in time, when your love reflects God's amazing creative power and gives you perhaps a child or two.
Christ right at the center. As you begin, we hope eagerly to see everything that God has in store for you. But for right now, we are filled with joy as we see God truly elevating and transforming the love that's been with you for all these years. And now taking it a step further to be sacred, to be fruitful, to be beautiful in a new way. So may His grace and blessing be with you today and every day. Now, the ritual calls for a number of questions. I'm going to begin with this one. Do you want to get in there? We do. We do. <laughs> do you? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. The center of the altar and your friends that join you there as Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the Lord so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community here gathered, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you, and through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. William Clark and Nancy Grace, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, I invite you now to face each other and join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, William Clark. I, William Clark. Take you, Nancy Grace. Take you, Nancy Grace. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part until death do us part. I, Nancy Grace. I, Nancy Grace. Take you, William Clark. Take you, William Clark. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Just repeat after me. Nancy Grace. Nancy Grace. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love. 
as a sign of my love and fidelity and fidelity in the name of the father in the name of the father and of the son and of the son and of the holy spirit and of the holy spirit William Clark William Clark receive this ring receive this ring as a sign of my love. As a sign of my love. And fidelity. And fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I invite you to please stand now as we offer our prayers, all of our intentions and desires to God our Father in heaven. Accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 And let us pray together the prayer that Christ himself has taught us. Our Father, our God, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you, Nancy and Clark, to bow your heads to receive the nuptial blessing. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, you formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these, your servants joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Nancy, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband Clark entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments. Made one in the flesh, may they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head to receive God's blessing. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, 
and enjoy, enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless all of you gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Clark and Nancy, you may share your first kiss as husband and wife.
once you hit 50, once you hit 50 years of age, you lose uh, that testosterone, and uh, you start becoming a crybaby. And uh, if you know me, you know my background. I was a Marine. I hate crying. I'm going to try not to cry, okay? Connor, you have authorization. If I start crying, come up and slap me, okay? <laughs> Please. I would, first off, just like to thank everybody so much for, for coming. Uh, you all are so important to Nancy and Clark. And one thing I wanted to mention to you was if you're on that list, you're not on that list because George and Denis put you on there or, you know, anybody else. It was, it was because Nancy and Clark decided to put you on that list. I think I put one person on the list to be here, <laughs> and he's not here. <laughs> My college roommate. So, uh, so if you're here, you're here because you're important to them. And I just want to make sure you, you understood that. Uh, one thing, I want to say two things about Nancy and Clark. I know my job is to say the, uh, the cheers, and I also want to say a blessing. But um, I think w w I was thinking a lot about what is it that really makes Nancy particularly special. I think you saw a little bit of it today at the wedding, and that is Nancy, of course, means gracious. And I think you see, and those who know her well know she's a very gracious person. And uh, I think that's something, Clark, you're very lucky to have. You really are. And she's always been that way. I mean, it's, I wish I could take credit for I th I'm going to give Denis a little bit of credit, because <laughs> Denis very gracious. But uh, I think you saw that, and she's always had that. And I think it's one of the things that makes her so attractive. Um, and then I want to mention something particularly about Clark. Uh, you know, this has been a challenging week for, for the O'Kelly family. They've had a lot going on, uh, you know, with fit, you know, health episodes with people. Uh, Brant, who, uh, you know, was up there, and it was so just awesome to see him with my daughters. Uh, one of the things I've always found very attractive about Clark and Brant is just the friendship, the brotherhood. And that means a lot to me because I've got brothers. In fact, are my brothers here? Do I have Tom? Is Tom here? Yeah, they're here. Okay. <laughs> All my brothers except Tom, I feel. <laughs> and then my brother John. John, are you over there? Yep. Is my brother Bill here? My brother Bill? Uh, right here, right here. Okay. <laughs> I love this guy. Um, and where's Pete? Pete. So one of the things I always found very attractive about Clark and watching Brandt is the brotherhood. The brotherhood means a lot to me, and I think we all witness it at the, at the wedding today, the love between two brothers. So I almost started to cry there, but I'm not going to. Um, I think it's a beautiful thing. It really is. But the thing that I really appreciate the most about Clark was uh, you, you saw the, uh, the four grandmothers here. Uh, three grandfathers have gone, hopefully, to heaven. Um, we'll find out <laughs> if we get to go there, which is kind of doubtful for my brothers and me, but uh, no, I hope, I hope we'll see them there. Um, but, you know, the, 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 you are who your, your relatives are. You are who your parents are, whether you like it or not. And, and we're with you. And I know uh, that Bo and Melanie and I and Denis are just so thrilled for you. We really are. I spoke last night about the perils of a Christian marriage. It's not a guarantee of success. But you know what we heard today at the wedding and what we've seen in our witness by both of you is that it really does matter. And the reason I mentioned the grandparents is how you handled it, Clark, when BK passed away. You wanted to get engaged, and uh, the way you handled that, you're so mature, so much more so than me. And one of the, those who know Clark well know, and forgive me, this is kind of an adult group, but I had a, a, a Marine general I worked with, and he talked about the gift that some people who, you know, some men can give what's called good phone. They can give good phone. 
and it has somewhat of a sexual connotation. I'm sorry, <laughs> it does. Um, but Clark, Clark gives really good fun. He really does. Anyone who knows Clark knows. I've heard this from so many people. He got on the phone, he was talking with Jack for an hour or in the car. He got on the phone with Gigi, he got on the phone with Denis, and he gave unbelievable phone. I mean, it was unbelievable. So, and that's a gift. I don't have it, I really don't. If you want, you want a fist fight, call me and my brothers, but you have a gift. But it was a beautiful thing to see, and it really made me think so much of Clark. It really did. Um, I've gone on too, too, too long already, but I just wanted to say how much it means to me to see Clark the way you love Nancy. You know, you can sit there as a father and you say to yourself, who's worthy? Connor, come on, punch me. <laughs> come on, come on, punch me, buddy. Come on, I got to man up, man up. But who's worthy? Who's worthy of your daughter? And I got to say, it's, it's, it's a tough, and you'll know someday if you're blessed with children, Clark, you'll know it's hard for a father to say he's worthy. You're worthy, buddy. So... <laughs> My, my hope, and then I will say a blessing, my hope for the two of you is that you live what Father Ray talked about, and that is you always put each other first, okay? Always put each other first. And if you're committed, it's going to happen. And you're surrounded by examples of marriages that have worked. And, and you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but stay the course. It, best decision I ever made marrying Denise, really. So. And, the, and the family members know it. So my wish for you both is love more than the other. Love more than the other. That's my hope for you. Always love more than the other. And if you're both trying to love more than the other, you're going to have an unbelievable marriage. To loving more than the other. And then lastly, let me just say a quick blessing, if I could. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the, the gift of seeing a wonderful couple get married today, for the courage that they exemplified in taking a chance on each other and a chance on and growing a family together um, and being the type of example to each of us that is so endearing, so wonderful, so beautiful to, to witness. May they be always aware of your love, Lord. May they be aware of your grace. May they invite you into every major decision that they ever have to make, and that they always know that everybody here tonight loves them and will do anything to help them. We ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen.
to fly For the day I die I'ma touch the sky Gotta testify Come up in the spot looking extra Cause this must be heaven I gotta testify Come up in the spot looking extra fly For the day I die I'ma touch the sky Gotta testify Come up in the spot looking extra fly For the day I die I'ma touch the sky Now let's take them high My girl spit the buffet at KFC. Dog, I was having nervous breakdowns. Like, man, these niggas that much better than me, baby. I'm going on an airplane, and I don't know if I'll be back again. Sure enough, I sent the plane to.